Hello, people, and welcome to the uh, third video this week, uh, officially. And here we will talk about objections, objection handling, and how to deal with objections. Uh, you remember when we talked about uh, meeting, that uh, fourth part of a meeting is objection handling. So we will go through them now. And I think this video will be really, really useful. So please pay attention to it, uh, write somewhere notes because it's really important. Uh, so uh, firstly, I wanted to talk about, of course, what is objection. As always, we start with that. Uh, first, uh, that is some problem that EP cannot solve alone. So for example, if he has some concern, if he's not sure about something and just he cannot solve that alone. And he's always like, okay, I can't go on exchange because of that and that. And then after that, you realize actually that it's not so a uh, big problem and that they can go. And uh, also when objections happen is when EP doesn't understand something good. For example, he doesn't understand that maybe something is paid on internship or it's not paid or I don't know, whatever. And it doesn't understand values of exchanges. When you see that EP really has some objections that actually are not objections, that he's just like imagining it, the problem is actually that he does not understand values and he only makes excuses. So either try to uh, like explain them once again, what is the value of our exchanges or just uh, let him her go. Uh, so uh, we will go through some objections uh, and I will give you some solutions, but I call you to be creative with uh, solving these objections. So first one is a really common one that if he wants to go to exchange next summer year or other one you will see now is that if he actually is like on the end of meeting, okay, for example, meeting was in October, can I apply in December, like before realizations, etc. So first I left you with a few why to go in winter and not next summer. <laughs> first and most common one, you can always say to them like that some countries are more beautiful in winter and that it's worth uh, visiting them in winter. Then if he is interesting, uh, if, if he is interested now for exchange, he's ready to go abroad, he's ready to have his internship or volunteering experience. Um, he will probably lose interest till next summer, till next year. So just say to them, okay, but if you're interested now, go now, because I know from experience that you will not be that interested later. And if you want to have like adventure experience now, go for it. And it's really common uh, from people in general to like uh, postpone some big things like going abroad or something, but just um, hype them up about exchange and explain them why he should go now. Uh, then there are a lot of opportunities during winter, which will not be there uh, until summer and during summer. So if he finds something good in winter, don't miss that opportunity because really uh, some opportunities does not open twice, do not open twice. Uh, then what when he say that he wants to apply later, for example, as he said, he wants to apply in December. Uh, there, first thing that you can say definitely is that flight tickets will be more expensive if he buys it month uh, before, for example, if he buys in January for January, then if he's approved now in October and then he uh, needs to go like in January. Uh, then, uh, like this, if he is approved before, he can have time to prepare to meet, for example, company to meet ICX to really be good prepared for experience. And if he is approved like a day before realization, he will not have time for anything. Uh, then, on every opportunity, there is only one to two opens, uh, and you know when is peak of approving. It's in November, so if he's not approved in November, there's a big chance that a lot of opportunities will be fulfilled. So maybe he will not find the right one if he applies later. So that are all the reasons that uh, you can really tell EP that it's better and it's really better for him to be approved earlier than later. Objection number two, parents don't let EP go. Uh, first, you need to find out what are they insecure about. Like um, talk with EP on honestly and say, okay, I just want to understand why. Is it because the parents don't trust us as organization, because they think that it's a waste of time, because they think it's too expensive? What is actually the problem? 
then offer to talk with them if they're more comfortable to talk with somebody from organization. I also did that as uh, OGX member because they really feel more comfortable when they uh, actually hear from somebody uh, from organization. Then help PP how he can convince them, list with him reasons, okay, what you will say to them, how you can make them trust you, etc. Then connect PP and parents with somebody that was already in exchange, so offer him that or their parents, okay, do you maybe want to hear from somebody that was on exchange? Uh, maybe you can even call somebody that was in the same country as that EP. We can always, as that EP wants to go, so we can always find somebody really uh, useful and really like connected to the same kind of experience. Then uh, show them website videos because you know that parents are a bit more traditional, so they will always first go to website to see what is that ISEC and where the, does my kid want to go. So uh, show them websites, some videos, YouTube, uh, they can really see Instagram, they can really see that we're like serious organization. Uh, yes, then we go to number three, uh, if he doesn't have money uh, or just for him experience is too expensive. First, uh, I wrote with small letter, I'm sorry, but find countries near Austria, maybe he can go to Czech Republic, Hungary, Serbia, Romania, uh, then, uh, I don't know, Switzerland, like some countries around us or near Austria. Uh, because like there the tickets are literally like 30 euros with bus so it's really really cheap and they're also our IR partners so even they will accept uh, him in there then find opportunities with good benefits now you have even a GV experiences with three meals with um, like really covered accommodation and three meals so find opportunities like that so he doesn't have any more cost than transportation but then <laughs> Uh, some GT opportunities even cover transportation, so if he's interested in GT, we can always find some IR partners or some opportunity that covers accommodation, just tell me or uh, your VP. Then make a plan with him, how will he save money, for example, calculate with him how much money he needs for transportation, for that, 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 and then how he will save money. Then explain that he can pay part by part separately, like he does not have to pay to us whole uh, money at once. And then help him uh, find some country that is more cheap in general. Like we know that, for example, uh, North Euro European countries like uh, Netherlands, Belgium, they're a bit more expensive, even if he wants to, for example, go out, uh, hang out with other APs, which is normal. So then try to uh, direct them to a bit more... Uh, cheap countries that are cheap in general, like Balkan countries, which has really beautiful, beautiful opportunities, or I don't know, um, if you offer him Africa, maybe transportation is a bit expensive, but uh, life is more cheap. So the best option then is South Europe, I would say. Uh, and explain what is included in price. So for example, if he's too like, why do I pay you this much money, etc. Just explain to him that that is accommodation and sometimes food and sometimes even transportation. So with that, he will get all that and he can really, yes, I also put that, uh, this, he really explained to them that he cannot find that cheap accommodation for six weeks or more for only three or 400 euros. So that is the last option that you should say to him, but it's totally okay to say, I also said it to my EP is okay, but that is really okay because you are staying then there for six uh, or um, eight weeks or even a year and uh, you get uh, help, support, etc. And for example, for vacation for 10 days, you also pay like 200 euros or even more. So we can always explain them also like that. And then uh, fourth one is that uh, EP is approved, but EP doesn't want to go on exchange suddenly. Uh, this is also uh, common. So you should first bring him back to reasons why he, why he chose to go, like why he does want to go, why he was approved, etc. Then explain all the consequences ICX will have, really explain to them that ICX is waiting for him because it's true that they are counting on him to do this internship or volunteering experience for six weeks. And then connect them with ICX, that is always good, like connect them with ICX and let them energize EP a bit, like, okay, we are waiting for you, we want to, you to come, etc. 
uh, to maybe send the send, send him some video. Uh, then connect EP with somebody who was on exchange. That is always, always a good option. And then explore a bit deeply, like what, what are the reasons behind this decision? Sit with him and honestly talk like, okay, but why? Or did you change your mind? Uh, <laughs> do you know that this experience is only like once in a lifetime opportunities? Really, if you were already approved, already accepted for some exchange, just go now and you will have time of your life at least. That is what I believe in. And if uh, if he doesn't go now, he probably never will. You can always say to him also like that. Okay, if he is already international student in Austria, we know that we have a lot of actually EPs like that. And uh, actually, first thing that you should always divide to them in their head is that this is not uh, studying abroad, like they're studying abroad. Like purpose is to develop personal and professional skills. And that is the first purpose of our exchanges. And also to have some impact, I didn't try it here, but also to have some impact on environment, especially uh, in GB. Then practical experience, uh, they're only studying here in Austria, but actually on our exchange, they will get something practical, like teaching in school, doing something practical, doing a practical internship and trying all that, that they're uh, learning at uh, school, university, etc. Then boost their CV, uh, explore working environment, because as I said, they're only studying here and try something new always. Like you can always say, okay, but you spend... Uh, I don't know, three summer in uh, Austria, maybe you can spend one summer abroad and do something different. And then uh, I think this is the last one. If he cannot uh, find the right opportunity, that is always an excuse. Like when he's like, okay, but I can really not find the right opportunities. Okay, we are there uh, just because of that. And OGX literally exists because of that to help our EPs with that. So first of all, what you need to explain to them, if you see that EP is choosing opportunities only based on country, that is really not good because entity, like entity as itself, is much more important than country. And good experience is more important than going to, I don't know, some fancy place like Paris or Madrid. Uh, really, it's not that important if you don't have good opportunity and if you not have good uh, experience there. So it's more important that ISEC is good there, that you will have good experience, and that is why we focus on our IR partners and not selling like countries, okay, go to some fancy place. No, it's really better that ISEC in that place is good than for that place to be good. Then communicate actively. Uh -huh. I saw, I'm sorry, I didn't wrote communicate actively with ICX. Uh, because uh, you can always ask them like in advance, okay, is this CP good for your opportunity? Can you accept him or no? And then he can apply, so you can check like that. Then talk with EP about their goals on exchanges and then try to direct them to right opportunity. So their goals can be, okay, I want to explore the country, that is cool. But also, what are your goals? Is it to be a bit independent? Is it to develop this, 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 this? and then try to direct them to that kind of opportunities because I'm sure that uh, you can find them. Uh, also, uh, be direct with them and say what is possible and not based on their CV. Again, you're experts, they're not experts, and they cannot, for example, apply for long term and then complain about, oh, but I don't, can get accepted. Of course, that you can't if you don't have enough experience. So please don't let them apply for everything. Just direct them, okay, based on your experience, you can apply for this, 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 and this. And this long term, if you try, we can try, but I cannot guarantee that you will get accepted, except for some, as you said, German-speaking opportunities that is really uh, like easier because they're only looking for German-speaking uh, people. Uh, okay, for the end, as always, I want to leave you with message. And uh, here I want to leave you that uh, we are not here to make EPs go and on exchange. And I don't talk here about objections because I'm like, okay, but we have to make them go to have more approvals. No, but you are the one who knows actually what is ISEC exchange, what is ISEC experience, and you are there to give to them beautiful experience and change their life. 
And that's why we are helping them with objections and helping them solve everything. And uh, I left you also this picture from first video, and that is the, that we are actually experienced provider. And always remember that all the DPs that you see in the picture had the millions and millions and millions on the, of objections. But then when they went on exchange, they were really grateful that they did, and they were really okay. Uh, this is all worth it. So uh, that is it for this video. Enjoy and see you. Bye.